Hey friends, today we are going to paint some daisies. So daisies are like the first flowers that we all learned as a child, didn't we? The stamen in the middle and then the petals sticking out this way. And for a long, 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 long time, that's the only kind of flower I kind of knew how to paint until I started painting a couple of years ago. And today um, we're going to paint these ones, which is a bit more advanced from, you know, the, the, the old style. Uh, childhood daisy painting. It's um, a corally uh, red paint uh, daisy and uh, I really hope that you enjoy this video so let's just get started. In this video today I'm going to paint for you this daisy illustration here and this is from this really lovely book called Botany for Gardeners. The Art and Science of Gardening Explained. It's got a um, couple of really beautiful um, illustrations of flowers here. And they're not very big, but, um, you know, vintage floral illustrations. One of my favorite things to, to look at and to use reference from. So I found this and we're going to paint this today. Um, I chose this because I like that there's three of them. I also like that they're all facing slightly different direction and that they're actually the same uh, color, same hue, but of different tonal values. So we can play around with um, in watercolor how we can get the different tonal values. So, yep, I'm just gonna set my paint, my book up here on my stand. And let's talk about supplies. So today I am going to use my Academy watercolor paper pad, otherwise also known as Bao Hong. Uh, this is 100% cotton, 300 GSM, and it's one of my favorite papers to use um, because uh, I feel like it it acts very similar to Archer's paper, which is one of the more premium watercolor paper, but it's far more economical. So uh, yes, Academy watercolor paper pad. Uh, this is a 10 by 7, so it's a smaller pad. We're just going to do a very simple, lovely uh, painting of these daisies. Brushes. Okay, so I'm going to use my size 12 round Princeton Heritage. And I'll keep my size 6 handy as well. And then for detail, I'll probably use my silver black velvet size 4. For my paints, as usual, I am using my paints from my crazy paint palette here. It's all different brands, tube paints. I'll do a video on all the different paints that I have soon. Just, um, I'm sure it'll be up real soon. And then I have my two cups of water that I use. Got my paper towel or my, where's my paper towel? There we go, yes, I have my paper towel that I use to dab. I'll put that close to my water. I've got my spray bottle. I'm going to spray down these paints to activate them. Get it nice and wet. Spray the wells as well. And let's get started straight away. Hmm, getting my large size 12 round. You know, you can use whatever size you like. I like to use a bigger brush to just get in there with the strokes. Um, and 12 is really one of my favorite sizes to use. What shall we do? Shall we start with the center? So the center of this daisy is going to pick like a yellow. It looks a bit like a yellowy green to me, but I'm just going to go and start with this one here. I'm just going to put a yellow center. Um, I've decided to just go in and do like a blobby yellow for the center and uh, not worry too much about um, making it look super cool and nice. So I'm just gonna also do the other center here, might as well. Okay, wash off all that paint and now I'm gonna go and do the first dark petal here. So I have this um, corally color that I'm going to mix into the existing uh, reddish hues that I have here on my palette. It's a Dan this one's a Daniel Smith coral 
and this one is a Mary May coral. <laughs> I'm just gonna mix it all up. So we have quite a thick um, loaded brush using the pointy bit of my brush to start from the stamen. Just gonna pull out that first daisy petal there and you will get a little bleed into the middle and if that's what you don't like then you don't need to touch it but I don't mind it and I'm just gonna go around this flower this the center of the flower and just pull out this first layer of petals so the whole idea is you just gotta make sure that you get the angle of the petals right. So it's coming from the center and then you're pulling it out. Um, all right, at this point, it looks a bit, I guess you would call it <laughs> amateur, but that's okay. Go in and wipe a bit of that color off. And what I'm gonna do is just going in between with a lighter hue. Okay, and maybe you find that a bit too light. So you see, I rotate between doing this stroke and this stroke. There are absolutely no rules of how you want to get this petal to come out. I like to rotate. I don't have one way of doing it. Um, you can, you know, experiment and see what you like. I'm going to dip a bit, a bit of orange into the center and just pulling it out into the petals, some of the petals. And then I'm realizing it's, looking, it's all looking a bit flat. So I'm just gonna go in with a dry brush and lifting some of the pigment up in some of the petals we have behind. Okay, as you can see, the center has almost disappeared the yellow, but that's totally fine. I'm just gonna leave it like this. All right, let's go on to the next one here. We're gonna do a lighter flower here. It's a uh, lighter in hue, so what I'm gonna do is mix up the color using that same hue. I'm just gonna add a lot more water now so that you get a lighter hue. You're letting the paper shine through on the back. And let's just start. Let's go for it. See, I dropped a bit of um, paint there. That's totally fine. I'm a bit of a messy painter, if you have uh, noticed by now. Um, that's just... <laughs> that's just how I roll. So doing the same. Getting some petals to come in towards the center with more water than the previous than this one here going in between that's fine okay is that good yeah i'm happy with that all right so now i'm gonna work on this one up here so I'm going to start from the bottom of that stamen which looks like a little bit of green gold. I'm going to actually, since I'm here, pull a stem down. And I'm going to pull a stem down here. I got a bit of sap green and green gold mixed together to pull a few of the stems. You can let the, bleed into the flower if you like. From here, go ahead and that lighter hue of pink. That means getting a very watery mixture once again. I'm going to pull some petals up. So this time, the flower is facing up. And I'm purposely not touching the green too much. Okay, because I don't want it to bleed that much down. Maybe a little bit. Looking at the reference and just seeing how the petals are falling away from the flower. And 
maybe dropping a little bit of that darker see I found a little bit of darker red here and dropping that into some of the petals here for a bit of shadow noticing I maybe could do a little bit of that here as well while the petals are still wet All right, so at this stage now, I'm looking at my painting and it looks a bit like, mm, not very nice. But you know what? There's always a weird, ugly stage to most paintings. So let's just push through, we gotta push. Okay, I'm gonna add some leaves now. And the leaves, I'm gonna find, I'm gonna get some set green, mixing it up with a bit of whatever that's left on my palette and creating some daisy leaves is always a bit of fun because daisy leaves have this fern-like shape where it's, it's a bit curvy it's a very distinctive daisy leaf mentioned here before the really nice thing about painting flowers is especially when you use a reference either a reference photo or reference illustration you get to recreate the beauty of nature with your own hands with your brush with your tools so whether it's you like sketching or you like painting. The act of recreating nature is something humans have always been doing since, you know, we've had human beings around from cave paintings and art. Um, so I believe so much that it taps into this uh, ancient way of connecting to the entire universe, to connecting to our creator, to connecting to um, the one, right? Whatever religion or whatever spirituality you subscribe to, you cannot deny that there is something bigger than yourself, than science, when you you know, doing some stuff like this, like painting, creating art. Okay, so got some leaves going there. Um, and I, what I've realized is I left a bit too much empty space at the top of this painting. So everything is really low. I did say I wanted to just do three, three flowers, right? But instead, I have gone to do something where I'm totally, uh, so much space at the top. So now it's a decision time. Do I just leave it and call it and put it in the background? Or do I add more flowers and go a bit nuts? So I think today I'm just gonna leave it. So instead, I'm gonna fill up the background with maybe more leaves. So just now it's freestyle time. So now I know what the daisy leaves kind of look like. I'm gonna just freestyle a couple of leaves sticking out to the top. And it's my decision for now, but I might change my mind again later, who knows. All right, I feel it's a bit more balanced now. I added that one leaf there, but I'm also still going like, oh, is this going to work? Just leaving so much space. Um, what I'll do, sometimes what I do also is I just start to flip my book and to see if there's anything else on the book that inspires me that might go with 
these daisies. Um, this is when, you know, I'm definitely still in this learning curve of composition, putting together my own arrangements, and it is through, you know, just doing it yourself, finding it, finding that balance that, uh, that we really learn to, um, to find our unique style. You know what? I'm just going to leave it today. I'm just going to leave it at this. And it's got this beautiful way of just being a beautiful artistic daisy. So I'm going to leave it to dry and then come back later to see if I want to do any layering. We are going to do the next layer. Some details on this beautiful daisy flower. Now, For the layers, I'm going to use my silver black velvet size 4. You can use any small pointy brush. I really like this. It's a bit more expensive than your usual uh, brush, but oh my god, it glides so beautifully when you want to create like um, a really cool marks with the petals and stuff. So let's start by just working on this bigger flower here so it's quite dry. And to make that shadow colour, I'm going to grab a bit of dragon's blood. Oh, actually no, this is carmine. Doesn't matter. Mix it up with a bit of that purple that's left on my palette here. And really, um, just choose any darker red, um, purplish kind of hue. And I'm just going to go in there to create a bit of veins. Very light veins. And um, looking at the reference, now this reference photo is an illustration, not a photo. So um, this person has already taken some artistic Come on doggy, come on doggy. already taken some artistic liberty to create um, his version or her version of this daisy. So just be mindful of that when you're looking at your reference photo. And you can also take your little bit of artistic liberty. So uh, one of the ways that you can define the back petals is to put the shadow where the back petals are okay you can go ahead and do that try to do that and then you're entering a more like realistic style of um, watercolor botanical illustration which which is a lovely lovely style but I tend to not have patience for that kind of style and uh, I don't really enjoy um, that process as well so you gotta know what you like about painting and don't force yourself to do something that um, that you don't enjoy. What's the point in that, right? So creating just a tiny bit of details or as much as you like. All right, I'm just going to leave that as that. I'm not sure. It's a bit messy um, at the moment, but it'll do. I need to define the middle bit a bit more. So I'm going to go into my yellow. A cadmium yellow and I'm going to just go over that a little bit more there we go just covering a bit of that bleeding effect that we had and um, the center of the daisy needs to be quite dark so that I can just rest on something so I'm just gonna go in with a bit of paints gray with burnt umber ah oh, there we go. That just makes me feel so much better. Okay, I'm gonna do the same here with this, with this little one. That's pointing slightly up that way. This one's pointing slightly up this way. So you can get that effect. All right, so this, this beautiful little light one here, I'm gonna just get also a darker, you can use that same, um, 
colour for the shadow that you did with this flower or just lighten it a bit if you like and just go in there and let your brush just dance around the petals thicker and thinner strokes going out to the edge, coming back to the middle and then always stopping when you feel it's enough okay that is the wonderful freedom of being an artist and painting in a style or whatever you like it's it's glorious uh, i'm gonna add a bit of shadow to this side of the of the stamen and down here too actually just a little bit of shadow here give me a bit of dimension okay up here let's go to this one straight away using that same um, same solution which is what again I don't even know sometimes you know you just find a nice muddy color in your palette in my palette and yep that's gonna be the highlight the the shadow color so always towards the middle there is a bit more darkness and shadow okay so I'm just gonna kind of like Maybe go into the this bottom bit of the flower. Okay. And then sometimes I need to, when I'm doing this bit, somehow I feel like my voice just goes a little bit softer. Because it's like it needs to be a bit more delicate or something. I don't know. Okay, I don't know. Pull back, pull back. When you zoom in too much, just pull back. And then you're like, oh, okay, what needs more off? What needs less off? Um, for fun, I always like to do a little for fun um, bit. So I can, I want to go into my opera rose here. Okay, I didn't spray this down enough, so I'm scrubbing it. Not ideal to do this with your brush. You want to take care of your brush. Opera rolls, grabbing a bit of it and just playing and see how that lands um, with your flowers. Okay, so with your lovely daisies. Daisies. Daisies are one of the first flowers that we learn to paint, don't we? Like, or draw as a, as a child. It's like, stamen in the middle and petals coming out. So, um, to then revisit a daisy as a grown artist, uh, it's, it's just so satisfying to go beyond that simplicity of uh, cent uh, center and petals out. Okay, so, What's happening here? Uh, a bit messy. It's fine. Just gonna soften that out a bit. I'm not sure about this opera, but it's there already, so nothing we can do. Uh, how are we feeling about this daisy now? I'm actually kind of liking it, and I am going to just add a tiny, tiny bit darker. Um, detail now okay so just a bit of burnt umber and and paints gray to I feel like it just needs some really bolder darker lines because everything was just looking a bit flat the eyes love contrast whoops that was a bit dark it's okay it's okay, and this fella here too. It just feels like it just needs a little bit of some definition, perhaps. As you can tell, I, I really don't 
have a plan when I paint. Um, I don't even know like what style it will end up becoming. I just kind of go with the flow. Some people call it intuitive painting. But I find that all painting is intuitive, isn't it? Let's get into that another day. All right, I'm gonna stop here. I'm gonna stop. These are my daisies. Three peachy, corally daisies. I hope you painted along and enjoyed it. So there you have it, the daisy painting. I really hope you enjoyed watching the video and I really hope you painted along. Today I used the, the pointy round brushes that I hope you have at home. So if you um, have an Instagram account, please, and you, if you do post it, please tag me. I'm at Crystal Tan Art. Um, if you like this video, please give it a like, please subscribe, please share, please comment. I am really excited to grow this channel and I'm, I'm actually really finding it quite enjoyable and it's becoming more and more easy for me to paint and talk, through you, uh, talk to you through my process and um, I'm having a lot of fun. So, uh, so wonderful that you can support me on this channel. What else do I have to say? I think that's it. So, uh, yup. See you in the next video.